I'm Hamish Johnston, editor of PhysicsWorld.com, and I'm here in the experimental hall of the Flash Free Electron Laser at DAISY in Hamburg, Germany. I'm surrounded by an amazing array of beam lines, vacuum chambers, and electronics, all dedicated to get the most out of the ultra-fast flashes of light that are produced just over there. Edgar Weckert, who's director of photon science here at DAISY, is on hand to give us a tour through the facility and help us understand what's going on here. Hi, Edgar. Hi, Amos. Thanks for inviting us. Pleasure. So the experiment's been running for five years now. What are some of the highlights? What are some of the big discoveries that have been made here? I could tell you a lot right here now, but let's go to the machines and apparatus and do that there. OK, great. Thanks. Well, normally all, all this is filled up with experimental equipment. Mm -hmm. You were asking for the most exciting experiments or the most important ones. One certainly that we should mention here is uh, people have been able with these very short pulses to image material even if the flux density was such high that the material was destroyed afterwards. But since material, even if you pump in energy by photons, needs a few picoseconds to react, the pulse is just shorter than uh, then this damage process needs to, do, to manifest itself. Another experiment, or what other people do, and this is certainly a main application here, is so-called pump probe experiments. You excite, let's say, with an optical laser, and as a function of the time delay, you monitor how is the system reacting to such a perturbation. So what we can do with flash here is we can look on non-equilibrium states of, of matter. So that, is that the experiment where you made the aluminium transparent? Uh, that's a different experiment in, in aluminium uh, transparent is people saturated the absorption of aluminium just such that there is a, this uh, excited state lives longer than the pulse is short and during the excited state aluminium cannot absorb uh, photons anymore and in this sense aluminium becomes transparent for this radiation. So how does flash create ultra fast pulses? Well, if we have at the beginning here of the LINAC, we have a photoelectron gun with a, a, a laser producing a very short uh, electron bunch. This is accelerated and compressed by magnetic chicane several times. And then you have this very short bunch, which is extremely parallel, and you put it through a, a long undulator. And in this long undulator, you generate light, normal spontaneous undulator light. And this light starts via the length of the undulator to interact with the electron bunch. And what happens is by this interaction you get very fine slices of electrons on the scale of the wavelength radi radiating in phase and this gives this dramatic intensity and since the bunch is that short, the electron bunch, you get these short photon bunches. Flash is a testbed for the European X-ray free electron laser which is being built here in Hamburg. How will work being, being done here inform uh, the development of that new facility? I mean in, in principle it's uh, the team or the machine division that does most of the work for the accelerator part is the same. Of course, there are subgroups responsible for flash, or other subgroups are responsible for, for XFAL, but many people are the same people, the same groups. So the knowledge we generate here is directly going to XFAL. However, we also use XFAL new development to back, backport them to, to flash. So in this sense, we have a, a very tight exchange of information between the two projects. Uh, with the photon beamlines, one extra photon beamline will be in the soft X-ray regime where flash is. So here the synergies as well. The others at XFL will be X-ray beamlines. And of course, that's a different, different game. What's next for Flash? Is there a Flash 2 on the drawing board? Yes, there is a Flash 2 on the drawing board. First of all, we just made an upgrade on Flash. We upgrade the energy and what we built in, I mentioned to you before, that our radiation starts from noise. This has a certain random nature. We call it SARS, self-amplified spontaneous emission process, which is nice to do experiments, but sometimes people would like to have a more defined wavelength or more defined timing. We talk about something sub 10 femtoseconds or sub 50 femtoseconds accuracy. We have a program called S-Flash, just being installed, where we want to see it with an external laser, which can be very perfectly synchronized, for example, to other lasers. We want to see the FEL in order to get a better timing, more defined timing, better shapes, better controlled pulse shapes. And since this machine is overbooked, depends on the period between three and five times, 
we were applying and successfully get funded for something what we call Flash 2, which means we get an exactly the second, a second experimental hall next door and the project is already running. We have set up the project structures, we have the project head and the first uh, competition for the architects for the buildings is just being done at the moment. So wh when do you expect that to be completed? We hope to do it in 2013 to 2014. Depends a bit, we're still working on the schedule because it has interaction with the user operation here, with the operation of all the other machines, but that's about the, the, the time that we target for. The other main photon science facility here at DAISY is the Petra 3 synchrotron source. Now that's been up and running for a bit over a year now. Yeah. Um, what has it achieved so far and what sort of plans do you have for it in the future? Petra 3 is so far the machine with the smallest emittance. Smallest emittance means it has the smallest, most parallel electron beam and this directly transforms into brilliant. So it's in principle the most, one of the most brilliant in a certain energy range. It is the most brilliant source in the hard X-ray regime. So not unlike Flash, which is a soft X-ray machine, it's the, in the most brilliant hard X-ray machine. It has achieved so far the go design values in, in emittance, which was important uh, design criteria. It has almost achieved the design current, which is a few percent away. So that, that's all, all very well done. Three of the 14 beam lines are already in the commission, uh, in user operation, in test user operation, will be in full user operation from August, September this year on. Others are coming up. Uh, we have another machine, Doris, which is going to be phased out in 2012, and we plan already now an extension of the 14 Petra beam lines by another 10 beam lines. Well, thanks, Edgar. Thanks for inviting us here, and thanks for the tour, and um, best of luck with photon science in the future at DAISY. Thank you. It was a pleasure as well.